my name is Kaylee and in this video I am going to look into what fossils can reveal to us about the hybridization that occurred with early humans during the late Pleistocene in Western Eurasia. This video is sponsored by Odoo, but as always, more on the sponsor later in the video. I have spoken many times now on the fact that our modern human ancestors on many occasions interbred with Neanderthals and Denisovans, as this is evident in our DNA. I even created a video around the start of 2022 where I looked into the first known full hybrid individual. She is known as Denny and she was a young woman with a Neanderthal mother and a Denisovan father. But there was a new study into hybridization during the late Pleistocene, which was conducted at the University of Tübingen in Germany. And the results of that new study have been published by Nature, which is of course linked in the description down below. Real quick before we dive back into hybridization of ancient humans, let's talk about something that could seriously level up your present. You know how ancient civilizations thrived on structure? The Egyptians had meticulous record keeping, the Romans had incredible logistics, and the Mesopotamians basically invented admin. Well, imagine if they had something like Odoo. Odoo is an all-in-one business management platform that brings every part of your company together. Website, sales, accounting, marketing, inventory, HR, you name it. Instead of juggling 10 different softwares, Odoo gives a simple, streamlined platform with more than 45 apps to run your business. The apps communicate seamlessly with each other, helping you avoid errors. And the best part? It's lightning fast, super intuitive to use and completely flexible. Whether you're a freelancer, a growing team or running an entire company, it scales with you. You start with the apps you need and then download new ones as your business and your needs grow. You get access to all apps starting at just 19 euros and 90 cents per month with unlimited hosting and support included. It's like the digital version of a well-planned empire. So if you're building your kingdom, don't do it with sticky notes and scattered spreadsheets. Automate your processes and use Odoo instead. Check the link in the description to see what it can do. And now let's get back into our hybridization of ancient humans. So in the past, human evolution was seen as a series of adaptive differences in behavioral, biological and physical characteristics until we Homo sapiens emerged and replaced all other human species. But as more research has been done into the human evolutionary timeline, we are actually learning that the human evolutionary timeline was far more complex than previously thought. Not only has the discovered archaeological and fossil evidence shown that all other human species underwent their own behavioral, biological and physical complexity, but now due to new paleogenomic work, we finally understand that some of these complex changes that occurred in the human species eventually contributed to our own genetic makeup. We also now know from paleogenetic evidence that hybridization occurred multiple times in our species' historic timeline. This hybridization resembles a network or a braided stream instead of the branches of a tree. Our genetic makeup that has been crucial to our survival and success as a species, a species that's able to adapt to changes in the climate, able to adapt to live in nearly all corners of the world. So when investigating the impact of something as big and important as hybridization, it is essential to use more than one line of evidence. As I've mentioned more than once on this channel, ancient DNA is incredibly rare and oftentimes not well preserved, especially in Southeast Asia and the African continent. This has everything to do with the heat and the humidity. These are two factors that are known to break down DNA much faster. And this leads to scientists often not being able to use ancient DNA in their investigations of hybridization, which means that oftentimes they need to look at the characteristics of the skeleton to recognize a possible hybrid. As you can imagine, recognizing possible hybrids in our evolutionary timeline can be vital for understanding our complex evolution and what it is that makes us human. So this latest research was conducted at the University of Tübingen by Professor Katharina Harvati of the Senckenberg Center for Human Evolution and Paleo Environment together with Professor Rebecca Ackermann of the Human Evolution Research Institute at the University of Cape Town in South Africa. 
The research study looked into the impact of hybridization by the use of fossil skulls and the identification of potential hybrid individuals in the past. The fossils that were used in this latest study were from ancient humans from the Upper Paleolithic that used to live in Eurasia, dating back to approximately 40,000 to 20,000 years ago. Thankfully, some of these fossilized remains still had ancient DNA, which helped in the research as they revealed Neanderthal ancestry within their genes, and this showed the recent interbreeding with the Neanderthals. This helped the investigation into the importance of hybridization when knowing that some of these skulls had mixed with the Neanderthals, and these hybrid skulls were then compared to skulls of non-mixed Neanderthals, early modern humans from Africa and recent modern humans. Three regions of the skulls were most looked at for this study, the mandible, the brain case and the face, to look for the telltale signs of hybridization. These telltale signs might be things like dental abnormalities or unusual sizes or morphological characteristics that are intermediate compared to Neanderthals or modern humans. Most signals of hybridization were evident in the brain cases and jaws instead of the faces. The researchers looked into the individuals with known genetic backgrounds and they considered whether the hybridization of the skeleton matched the percentage of Neanderthal ancestry. The hybridization didn't necessarily match the percentage of Neanderthal DNA, was their conclusion, which suggests that the presence of certain genetic variants is most likely more important than the overall proportion of Neanderthal DNA in their ancestry. Of course, hybrid status should be confirmed using the genetic data when possible. But there's also a need for more researchers looking into fossils and combine multiple lines of evidence to identify hybridization in the fossil record. Therefore, these identification hypotheses need to be tested, because they could eventually lead to new discoveries. A lot of other organisms, ranging from simple plants to mammals, have hybridization that's known to produce evolutionary innovation. This also includes outcomes that are novel and diverse. Approximately 10% of animal species produce hybrids. This includes, for example, bovids, bears, cats, and canids. But hybrids are also known in primates. There have been hybrids found in baboons, for instance. When hybridization occurs, it can lead to new variations and create new combinations of variations, which can facilitate, in particularly, rapid evolution. And this is important when looking at new or changing environmental conditions. Hybridization most likely played a huge role in the advantages that modern humans had compared to the other human species. They most likely gave us genetic and anatomical features which led to our species being the most resilient of them all, and therefore the only human species left to roam the Earth. I personally think that without hybridization, our species would have disappeared, just like all the other human species. But what do you think? Let me know in the comments down below. And uh, no, I'm not a supporter of America in the sense that uh, everything that's currently going on. This is just a t-shirt that I found in the closet that I bought years ago and I actually wore it in one video that actually kind of went viral and haven't worn it since because I started to hate it even though I actually love the shirt. And I decided, you know what, I just want to wear whatever I want to wear and you guys are just going to have to accept that. But we're just going to leave it at that because I don't get political ever on my channel. So let's not do that. Uh, if you enjoyed watching, then don't forget to give this video a thumbs up, subscribe if you'd like to see more of these kind of videos and click that bell icon if you want to be notified whenever I upload. If you haven't seen my previous videos yet, then click the card in the upper right corner or click one of the links in the description down below or click the video in the end card. I would also like to say a massive thank you to my patrons and my channel members. Thank you so much for supporting me. And I will see you in the next video, which will probably drop very soon. But yeah, see you in the next one. <laughs> Bye.